temperaments affect every aspect of our lives from the way we react to situations to the way we chew our food even down to the way we mm, 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 have sex and that is why in this video we're going to be looking at how temperament affects the way we view sex in general centering our focus in this particular video on the sanguine temperament before i go into all of that we need to understand the basics let's assume you just stumble on my video and you don't even know what temperament is like you're just probably coming across the world for the very first time so we're going to define temperament and look at some of the basic characteristics of the four temperaments let's take this simple definition temperament forms the basis of who you are and they are genetically transferred all right so this is actually who you are and i love the way tim lahaye puts it in his book he says temperament is the reason why you act the way you do so it's basically who you are you cannot change who you are unlike personality a single individual can actually have like various personalities depending on who is asking right <laughs> You get some people maybe say they show them your crazy side then some people you know they bring out your spiritual side and then some other people you bring out your playful nature so that is personality people can actually assume different personalities but temperament is something that is almost static you cannot change it this is who you are it's just like a leopard you cannot get rid of the spot and there are four temperaments we have the choleric temperament the sanguine temperament the phlegmatics and the melancholy temperament each of them have their own weaknesses as well as their strength. Take note of this. No temperament is better than anyone. It's just like saying eh, this man is better than this person because he has this temperament. No, there's nothing like that. The only difference between individuals is that people, some people have been able to identify their weaknesses and work on it. For example, if you say a sanguine has a weakness of indiscipline, which is one of their basic weaknesses, if a sanguine person is able to work on his indiscipline and become more disciplined, he's going to become more productive and even more successful in life. Does that take away the fact that he is a sanguine? No, he's still a sanguine. A sanguine will always be a sanguine, right? <laughs> so the difference is that some are able to work on their weaknesses while others struggle with their weaknesses all through life. In order not to have a very lengthy video, Video, we're going to look at some of the basic features of the temperament and right after them we're going to look at how the sanguine temperament behave towards sex which is the main reason for this video right <laughs> number one the choleric temperament people of the choleric temperament are natural leaders we can say they are born leaders they have this ability to lead others because they are goal driven they are goal centered always focused on chasing their dreams and accomplishing whatever it is they set before them these are people who sometimes when you stand on their way like they want to achieve something in the block that they don't mind crushing you bro they have to achieve what they want to achieve all right, this is one of the strongest characteristics of a choleric temperament. And most of our renowned world leaders are of the choleric temperament. Does it make them better than other people of different temperament? It doesn't. Like I said, it is your ability to work on your weakness that will determine how far and successful you can go in life. With that being said, let's look at the melancholy temperament. The melancholies are introverted, highly introverted. They are creative. They have this imaginative thinking. They are deep thinkers. Most of our artistic people, musicians, artists, they are of the melancholy temperament because a melancholy is someone who is always within himself thinking of what to create. They are very creative. So they think, they produce things, they are very innovative. And then they are perfectionists. That is why sometimes a melancholy will have a goal to achieve. He wants to do something. But he might not pursue that goal immediately because he's thinking about everything. He wants everything to be perfect. And sometimes that can be a problem for the melancholies because he wants everything to be perfect. They are perfectionist. As such, it's going to hinder them most times from achieving their goals. So basically, melancholies are introverted, creative, highly imaginative people. They take their time. They don't rush. If you have a melancholy in the midst of people, maybe a group of people having a conversation, before he would say a word, in his head is already calculating uh, okay uh, i will say it this way i think i'm going to present my view this way so that they can understand me better so that they will not misunderstand me you know he's going to continue to think about what he wants to say and at the end of the day he might not say a word in that conversation that is a melancholy for you if you find a melancholy who have been able to work on his perfectionism tendencies he becomes better now he dwells less on imagining things so much overthinking you know did they overthink <laughs> 
<laughs> so he becomes a little bit more spontaneous, right? And that leads me to the next temperament, which is a sanguine temperament. These are spontaneous people. They are very extroverted, people-oriented. You know, they like to be around people. They derive their energy from people. You hardly find a sanguine man or a woman always alone or maybe a loner. No, sanguine is always the groovy, groovy life of the party, you know? That friend of yours that when he comes around everywhere is heated up no dull moment that is a sanguine and lastly i'm rushing a little bit because you know i don't want the video to be too long right <laughs> lastly let's look at the phlegmatic temperament ah these are the loyal friends phlegmatics are very loyal they are very kind people down to earth easy going okay you can have a phlegmatic as a friend for 30 years they hardly discard people. Even when people do wrong things to them, you know, these are people who, they tend to see the humanity in everyone. They tend to make excuses for people's character. They tend to accommodate everybody. A phlegmatic any day, any time is very easygoing. That is why most times when cholerics are paired with phlegmatics, phlegmatics can actually help them achieve their goals more and cholerics love phlegmatics because a phlegmatic man is not the person who will want to judge you easily. Even though in his mind he has his reservations, right? But then he is too loyal. <laughs> too loyal to be confrontational to be disobedient you know the phlegmatic is just your gentle guy very easy guy to go to any day anytime if you want to have a comprehensive knowledge about temperament i would suggest you read the book by tim lahaye why you act the way you do in this book for every temperament he outlined 10 strengths and 10 weaknesses that is to show you that no temperament is better than any other one all of us human beings have our strengths and our various weaknesses. Now, moving on to how sanguines react towards sex. Okay. <laughs> a sanguine is that temperament, that person who can have sex on a first date. Like a sanguine doesn't care. He's so carried away. He's so in the moment. They are very spontaneous. I used to have a boss who is of the sanguine temperament. Honestly, every time this man calls for a meeting, he will look at us and he will be so emotional. He will talk and the next thing, he will just declare an increment in our salary. Like almost every time. So anytime he calls for a meeting, we're always excited. Okay, what is Chama going to do now? Before you know, at the end of the day, he's going to do something. Sometimes without even thinking it through, like, you know, they are so spontaneous. Once it comes to their mind and their head, they just carry it out. They just say it. And, you know, that is one thing that the sanguine does. So it transcends also to the way they react towards sex. For example, a sanguine man can easily be tempted and fall for it. Because, you know, once he is in the mood, he hardly thinks far that, okay, I have a child, I have children, what is the implication of this? Before you know, uh, after I don't do finish, that is when he begins to think that, okay, uh, what have I done and the rest. So people of the sanguine temperament easily have sex. Like they are easily tempted, they can easily fall for temptation because they hardly think things through. They are always in the moment. They don't like, you know, think far like some of other temperaments. And looking at the brighter side, a sanguine can be a helpless romantic. You know that guy that wants to propose in the mall or maybe where you have a lot of people. You know those people that will do a very pronounced proposal. So the sanguine temperament is someone who doesn't really think so much. Like you hardly find him having like a three days thinking process like on a stretch. No, you can hardly see him doing something like that. They always live in the moment. They are always spontaneous people. If for example, a sanguine man is telling his girlfriend that I love you. You've been so much of a blessing to my life. I can't even think about what I would have done without you. The next thing, he can just give everything he has. He can just tell you that, okay, you sit at my house. I give it to you. This is the key. Just take it. <laughs> That is a sanguine for you. They are very, very spontaneous. They are your jolly good fellow any day, any time. And it also transcends the way they behave towards sex. In this video, I cannot possibly cover every characteristic of a sanguine temperament, right? But the aim here is to let us know how they behave towards sex. And also, lest I forget, this is very important. A sanguine temperament person is someone who can easily forgive you when you hurt them. They don't think about things so much that they keep it in their mind and it stays there for donkey years and you know they lock it and throw the key away. No. A sanguine person is spontaneous so even in that he can forgive his spouse for cheating on him. Yes. 
and be with her or be with him okay if you're watching this video to this point that means you're enjoying it so i give it a like thank you so much and if you're seeing my face for the very first time my name is wendy zill and i'm glad you're seeing this video this is going to be a series okay so in the next video i'm going to talk about how the melancholies react towards sex so if you're interested in this topic make sure you subscribe turn on the post notification bell so that you will not miss the next video i'm going to post i'm going to post how the melancholies react towards sex and i'll move on to the cholerics and of course the phlegmatics we need to understand how these various temperaments behave around sex like i said temperament affect every aspect of our life this is just one aspect of it that i'm talking about when you talk about food <laughs> somebody can pick this topic and say okay let's look at how they behave towards food because the way a melancholy is going to decide on what to eat is different from the way a sanguine will decide on what to eat, all right? And as well as the choleric and the phlegmatics, okay? So this is just about how they react to us, mm -mm -mm, you know now, <laughs> which is also very important because, you know, it is also one aspect of life that is very, very important. So thank you so much for watching this video. I love you so much. My returning subscribers, you guys rock. I love you, you know, from the depth of my heart. Thank you so much. I'll see you on the next one.